Hello and welcome back. Today we've got a very exciting tutorial. We're talking about route tables. So let's have a look at a scenario. Here is our VPC inside which we have two subnets, a private and a public. And the CIDR block of the VPC is 10.0.0.0.16. The subnet CIDR blocks are 10.0.2.0.24 and 10.0.1.0.24. Inside each subnet, we're going to launch an EC2 instance. Here's our first one with its uh, private IP address. And here's our second one with a private IP address and a public IPv4 address, which was assigned by the subnet. Now we have the following challenge. Our EC2 instances want to connect with each other, they want to communicate. And moreover, our public EC2 instance would like to communicate with the public internet, for example, this IP address and with Amazon Public Services, for example, with S3. And moreover, we even already have an internet gateway set up for our VPC. So the question is, how can our instances navigate this environment and find how to get to where they need to go? Yes, indeed, they have the IP addresses of the destinations, but how do you get there? It's like in the real world. If you have an address of somewhere, that's only half the solution you still need a map or a GPS to guide you. You need to find the pathway to take to get to where you want to go. You need a route. And that's where route tables come in. They inform how to get to the destinations where our instances or resources want to go. So let's have a look at an example. Here's our first route table. And as you can see, there's only one entry. The first column destination is how we pick the route. So we need to check where we're going, where we want to go and see which route it matches. So in this case, we only have one route. So if our destination falls inside 10.0.0.0 slash 16, which is exactly the CIDR block of our VPC, then this route is telling us to go locally. This is how to get to those destinations. And that is enough information for our EC2 instance to be able to get to anything within our VPC. So we're going to take this route table and attach it to our private subnet. Now, something to keep in mind is that route tables are created at VPC level, and then they are attached, or the correct terminology is they're associated with subnets. Um, every subnet has to have a route table attached to it, associated with it, and it can only have one route table associated with it. On the other hand, a route table can be associated with many subnets. So we've attached our route table to the subnet, and now when our EC2 instance wants to connect to the other EC2 instance, it will check the route table, it will see that the IP address 10.0.1.44, which represents the second EC2 instance, so that IP address falls into that route, matches the destination, and it'll be able to easily from there find our second EC2 instance. Now let's have a look at an example of a second route table. So here we have a route table with two entries. The first entry says if your destination is within the CIDR block 0000 slash 0, which as we remember represents all the IP addresses in the world, so basically whatever your destination is, go to the internet gateway. That's how to get to your destination. Then there's a second route saying that if your destination falls within the CIDR block 10.0.0.0 slash 16, then the way to get there is to go local. So how do we choose between these two routes? In the cases when the IP address of a destination matches both routes, which one do we pick? Well, there's a rule that the more specific route always wins. And the more specific route is the one with the longest prefix. So as we remember from previous tutorials, the higher the prefix, the more, the smaller the network that it represents. And so that it means that it's more specific. So in this case, if a route, if a destination matches both, we will always pick the one with the higher prefix. So let's have a look at this in action. We're going to take this route table, we're going to put it into the public subnet. And from here, if our EC2 instance in the public subnet wants to go to the other EC2 instance, which is 10.0.2.183, that matches both routes. But as we discussed, we have to pick the more precise one, which is the one with the higher prefix. So the EC2 instance will know to go locally. On the other hand, when our EC2 instance wants to go uh, to the IP address 173, 24, 12, 175, which is somewhere on the internet, then that uh, IP address only matches the first route in this 
route table so the students will know that the way to get to that IP address is through the internet gateway. And same thing for the other IP address, the one of the AWS public service. So there we go, that's how route tables work. Uh, it's common practice to have two route tables inside your VPC, one for private subnets and one for public subnets, so that public subnets get routed to the internet gateway and private subnets don't. And that's exactly how we set up the internet gateway connectivity. And that's what distinguishes a private subnet from a public subnet. As we probably remember, we discussed the difference between a private and public subnet is just how they're set up. And that is exactly the difference in the setup uh, public subnets have a route to the internet gateway and private ones don't. Here's a quick summary of what we discussed and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, enjoy the cloud.